Shepherd. Remember when you were a puppy? One puppy, two puppy on a puppy bed. The littlest one has fur that's I'm red. kind of new, so I'll stick with you. I like new places, seeing lots of new faces. And before this day's through, we'll make good friends like you. Sarah asks the police chief, how did you know that Mrs. Greenhouse wasn't telling the truth? How did she know? I don't know. Let's see. Simple, answers Sarah Solver. During the crime, Mrs. Greenhouse claimed to be picking daisies by moonlight. Well, that night there was a new moon, and a new moon gives no light. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Sarah Solver is so amazing. I know. So what does the chief say when she tells him? Thanks, Sarah Solver, says the chief. Your sensational solution has solved an unsolvable crime in the nick of time. Boy, <laughs> they don't call her Sarah Solver for nothing. And I thought the butler did it. <laughs> Nina, you always think the butler did it. <laughs> and one of these days, I'm going to be right. What do you say, Clifford? <laughs> 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 Looks like it's bedtime. <laughs> wow, an indoor campout was such a great idea, Emily Elizabeth. It'll be good practice for when we really do go camping this summer. What's that blanket you're holding? It's my baby blanket. M my blankie. <laughs> I still like to sleep with it. I'm a little embarrassed about it. Why? It's no big deal. I know, but it's just not something I really tell people about. It. It's kind of private. Oh, well, good night, everyone. Good night. Oh, oh Shun, we had the greatest time. It was just like camping out. We put up a tent, we read a Sarah Solver story, we got in our sleeping bags. Cool. And then we all went to sleep. You know, when the Elizabeth sleeps with a blanket that's exactly the same color as your sweater. And in the morning, we had waffles. With those little sausages? Right, with those little sausages. I love those little sausages. Sounds like a great camp out. I mean, camp in. I, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> it was really fun. King me. Oh dear, I wanted to have this baby blanket ready for my granddaughter three weeks ago. But <laughs> she'll be in college by the time I'm done. <sighs> well, maybe it won't matter. Kids love their baby blankets at any age. Why, Emily Elizabeth still sleeps with hers. Really? Okay, Kara, how sweet. Mr. Solomon, our famous author. So, how is the new children's book coming along? It's not, Mrs. Z. I've got writer's block. I can't think of anything that kids will want to read about. Well, how about blankies? Whatsies? You know, baby blankets. Lots of kids start off with one. In fact, Emily Elizabeth still sleeps with hers. No kidding. Hmm. Blankies. <laughs> yes, indeed. Blankies. <laughs> Has a nice sound to it. McKay, uh, weren't you leaving? Are you kidding? I've got blankies to write about. Ready to go play some fetch, boy? Hey, Shun. What's that? 
My pet shark, Mr. Wilbo. Sure nice to have him back. Where'd he go? The laundry. Last night I spilled hot chocolate on Mr. Wilbo and I had to sleep without him. It was terrible. You know what I mean. It'd be like if someone took your blankie away. Did he say my blankie? Mm -hmm. No, he couldn't have. Emily Elizabeth and Clifford. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Z. What are you knitting? Oh, something you'd appreciate. See? A baby blankie for my granddaughter. I just hope she loves it as much as you love your blankie. Here's my floor. Have a pleasant day, you two. Ciao! Clifford, Mrs. Z definitely said blankie, right? But how could she... Ah, Emily Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What for? For giving me the best idea for a book I've ever had. I did? You did. And so I'm dedicating it to you, see? To Emily Elizabeth Howard, a wonderful girl with the best blankie ever. In fact, that's the title. The best blankie ever. Well, thanks again. Clifford, how does everybody know about my blankie? The only person I ever told was... Oh, no. Nina. Oh, hi, Emily Elizabeth. You told everyone. About what? My blankie. No, I didn't. That's ridiculous. Oh, well, it might have slipped out when I was playing checkers with Shun, but he's the only one who knows. I don't think so. <laughs> Mr. Solomon! Yes, Mrs. Z. How is the blankie book coming along? Great. The book company thinks it's the best I've ever written. I can't wait for it to come out. How wonderful. Why, the whole world will know about Emily Elizabeth's wonderful blankie. See? Now everyone will know that I still sleep with my blankie. Well, it's not like you know everyone, so it won't really matter. <laughs> That's not the point. I didn't want you to tell people about my blankie. It's my private business. But it's not a big deal. It is to me. And I told you I didn't tell people about it. So why did you? Come on, Clifford. We're going. Uh, but Emily... Oh, fine. Be that way. Emily Elizabeth! Thank you again. And please be sure to thank that wonderful blankie of yours. Gee, Jorge, it's been three days since Emily Elizabeth and Nina had their big argument. You think they'll ever talk to each other again? Gosh, I don't know, Clifford. The longer they wait to patch things up, the harder it may be. Oh, if we could just bring them together. Sure! Uh, how? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I got a big idea. Ready to go play some fetch, boy? That's not ours. Excuse me, Jorge, but I think that's our ball. Clifford, that's our ball you've got. I don't feel like playing outside anymore, Clifford. Come on, boy. Let's go back inside. Well, I can have fun by myself. Emily Elizabeth? Oh, hi, Evan. Hey, Nina. Where's Emily Elizabeth? Not talking to me. Why? You two were such good friends. Well, Emily Elizabeth told me something that was kind of private to her, and I kind of mentioned it to someone, and it kind of got around the building. And so she's kind of mad at you, right? More than kind of, but Evan, I really don't know why. It's not like what I told was such a big deal. 
Now, Nina, did you ever tell Emily Elizabeth something that you wouldn't want repeated? You mean like that time at the beach when I lost my bathing suit in the water and... <gasps> Nobody else can know that. I promise I won't tell. <sighs> okay. Well, maybe Emily Elizabeth feels the same way. So, even though it didn't seem like a big deal to me, I guess it was a really big deal to her. You got it. Clifford, I know everyone has fights now and then, but I just feel so awful about fighting with Nina. And camping out alone isn't much fun either. Hi, Emily Elizabeth. Hi, Nina. I just wanted to say that I shouldn't have mentioned your blankie to anyone. Oh, that's all right. No, it's not. It was private, and I should have been more careful about talking about it. I'm really sorry. Here. For me? <gasps> A new Sarah Solver mystery! For our next indoor campout. If you ever want to have one with me again. Well, I'm kind of free tonight. Really? But Sarah, asked the police chief, you actually know who the burglar is? Tell us. It was the ice cream man. I'm positive. It's all very simple, answers Sarah Solver. The only person who could have done it was... No, no, wait, wait, wait. Not the ice cream man. The florist. Okay. It was... The butler. No, not the butler. You know I was about to say the butler. <laughs> <laughs> like a great story. Today's story is Speckle and the Fairy Tale. Speckle and his friends were reading a great story. It was a fairy tale about a beautiful kingdom and all the princesses and brave knights who lived there. It looked like so much fun that Speckle and his friends decided to dress up like they were the characters in the book. But what could they wear? King Speckle made a crown out of an old newspaper. Queen Reba found a beach towel that made the perfect cape and decorated her hair with a beautiful chain of wildflowers. With his sand pail and flying disc, Sir Darnell was ready to fight a mighty dragon. Then Princess Luna and Prince Rabby pretended that ordinary brooms were majestic horses and raced each other around the palace. It was so much fun, they played for the rest of the afternoon. The end. I love reading stories together. You know, Clifford, for such a small dog, you sure are a big reader. With friends like you? I got it. I got, I got it. it. Over I'm here. here. Over I'm here. Open. I got it. <gasps> My ball. Here I go. <laughs> Make it a high one. Make it a high one. <laughs> wow. That was a really high one. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Oh. Ah. Ah. Huh? Oh. Ah. Ah. No. Ah. Jorge. Jorge. Jorge! <laughs> yes? Don't get upset, but you're going nowhere fast. I'm what? You're not moving! You're stuck. Oh, no. What am I gonna do? Uh, okay. Uh, don't worry, Jorge. We'll help you get out. Sure. Of course we will. Maybe we could slide him out very gently. That's a great idea, Daffodil. Oh, okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. 
<laughs> What's so funny? Oh, you guys found my ticklish spots. Oh, oh, no more pulling. I'm too ticklish. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's think of something else. Oh, please, guys. I'm getting tired of being stuck in this fence. Hmm. Hmm. How about... Nah. What if I can't get out? How will I play? Or sleep? Oh, no. How will I eat? Oh, no. Just thinking about food makes me hungry. Wait a minute. I got a big idea. Oh, oh, wait here, Jorge. Where else is he gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> Look what I have for you, Jorge. A tummy yummy. <laughs> it's all yours, Jorge. <laughs> you just have to come and get it. <laughs> Tommy, yummy! <coughs> oh, that was delicious. Hey, I'm unstuck. Clifford, you saved me. Great job, Way to Clifford. Go. Oh, it was nothing. I just... No, no, no. It was a big something. I'd still be stuck in that fence if it wasn't for you. Well, I was happy to do it, Jorge. Well, little buddy, I'm gonna make it up to you. You'll see. Hmm. I know I buried my bone around here somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh. This must be the spot. Stop! Clifford, let me do that for you. Oh! Jorge, you don't have to dig up my bone for me. Well, sure I do. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be stuck in that fence. I want to dig it up. Here you go. Wow, Jorge. Thanks. Oh, it's the least I can do. Jorge, what's that? Cool. You brought your toys over. Thanks for sharing with me, Jorge. Oh, I'm not sharing them, Clifford. I'm giving all my toys to you. But some of these are your favorites. Uh, I don't understand. Don't you want them anymore? Well, sure. But if it wasn't for you, I'd still be stuck in that fence. Oh, no. I couldn't take your... Oh, a super jumper frog hopper! <laughs> Thanks, Jorge! I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it! Oh, wow, water. You didn't have to bring me water, Jorge. Oh, yes, I did, Clifford. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be stuck in that fence. I owe you this water. <laughs> Thanks, Jorge. Oh, are you hungry? I can give you all my tummy yummies. Uh, no, that's okay. Are you sure? Uh-huh. I'm sure. Oh, how about if I find you a stick? It's no trouble. It's the least I can do. If it wasn't for you, I'd still, still be stuck, stuck in, in that fence. fence. You know it, little buddy. Hey, Jorge, how'd you like to play a game of fetch with me? I'll throw the ball first, and then... Oh, no, Clifford. Let me do that. Okay, you throw the ball, and I'll fetch it. Uh, <laughs> what you doing? I, I thought I was gonna fetch the ball. Oh, I couldn't let you go to all that trouble when I can throw and fetch it for you. But, Jorge... No buts, Clifford. Remember, I owe you. If it wasn't for you, I'd... Still be stuck in that fence. I know. <sighs> Are you tired, Clifford? Uh, uh, you know, I think I'll just uh, go upstairs and take a little nap. Oh, no, you don't. 
I'm gonna make you a bed and you can take a nap right here. Jorge, you don't have to. Are you kidding? I owe you big time. If it wasn't for you, I... I know, I know. You'd still be stuck in that fence. Now you just lay right down here and go to sleep. And I'm gonna stand guard and make sure no one bothers you. You are? Oh, okay. Shh! Clifford is taking a nap! But she wasn't bothering me. It's okay, I took care of it. Go back to sleep now! So, Clifford's trying to take a nap. But I didn't even hear them. Oh, go back to sleep, buddy. I made sure they won't bother you anymore. Shh! My friend Clifford is trying to sleep. Uh, Jorge, I can't sleep. With all this racket, I can't blame you. I'm just gonna go upstairs. Oh, what? You want me to open the door for you? Jorge wouldn't let you fetch your own ball? Uh-uh. Or open my own door. He wouldn't even let me take a nap without helping. I'll get it! Hi, Nina. Hi, Jorge. I think Clifford's in the bedroom. Oh, no. Strange. I thought Clifford was in here playing with Daffodil. Maybe he's visiting Flo and Zoe. You can't avoid Jorge forever. Well, what else can I do? You could just tell him how you feel. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'll just say, uh, Jorge, um, it was really nice of you to do all those great favors for me, and at first I really liked it, but, um, could you please stop now? Phew. <laughs> okay, that wasn't so hard. I can say that to Jorge. Clifford! Jorge, I can't tell him. Clifford? Oh, I was sure I just saw him over here. Uh, 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 <coughs> oh, Clifford, is that you? Oh, uh, Jorge, I didn't see you there. Oh, maybe because you were hiding under that pile of leaves. Well, uh, I... Uh, I... Have you been trying to keep away from me, Clifford? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, I guess so. Uh, well, to be honest, I really didn't like how you were doing everything for me all the time. But I just wanted to show you how much I appreciated your help. But if I was stuck in a fence or in some other kind of trouble, wouldn't you help me? Well, sure I would. And would you expect something in return? Oh, of course not. I... You're my friend, Clifford. Exactly. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I guess I've been acting kind of silly. Well, I guess I have too. I'm sorry. So am I, buddy. <laughs> so what do you say we play a game of fetch? Okay. <laughs> as long as you promise not to help me fetch the ball. <laughs> you got it, Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> Clifford, I just found a great new place to bury bones. Where? It's a special secret place, so if I tell you, do you promise not to tell anyone? I promise. Okay, it's... Wow, that is a great place, Jorge. Hey, little Rouge. Jorge, what's new? Jorge just found a brand new spot to bury bones. It's a... Oh, 
Clifford knows that keeping a promise is a very important part of being a good friend. So whenever he makes a promise, he keeps it. Oh, I'm sorry, Norville. I can't tell you without Jorge's permission. I made him a promise. Jorge, is it okay if we tell Norville about Oh, sure. Norville won't tell anybody. My beak is sealed. When you keep a promise, you're being a good friend. And that's why Clifford's idea to grow on for today is be a good friend. Okay, Norval, you are going to be so surprised. <laughs>